I'm excited to hear what you guys are going to talk about, about widespread prayer. So I want to uh, give it to you, Rick, uh, and to okay. uh, talk with uh, Olivia. Well, that's, that's been a big part of uh, our ministry uh, all the way back prior to even see at the poll. We, we just believe that prayer changes things. And so if we're ever going to claim our campus as Olivia's ministry's call, we, we, we have to claim it in, pr in prayer. Uh, one of my favorite verses is uh, in Judges, it says, shout for the Lord has given us the city. And we want to we just shout that God has given us our schools. Mm. Uh, in the same way, we want to make our prayers known to the Lord. And also, I mean, just the beginning of any great movement, uh, anything that happens, any power that we have, uh, mm -hmm. I think that's probably the re main reason why ministries and uh, why we're so weak right now is there's just a lack of prayer. There's a lot of talk about prayer, but not mm -hmm. actually prayer. And when we pray, we not only do we talk to God, but we need to hear from God. Uh, I was thinking that Olivia and I were talking yesterday about when we prayer walked Frisco High School together. And it was just so interesting. We were all just not just praying for diff different things, but we were the Lord was revealing things to us about Frisco High School. Remember that, Olivia? That was so interesting that uh, we just we just captured some ideas, and I, I think that's probably the best thing we can do at prayer walking. It just it not only does it allow us to uh, invite God into that that presence, but also we hear from Him that which really causes us to care for that school. And uh, obviously, the gospel is the only thing that's going to make the big change. And so, the prayer, care, share concept can be ignited by prayer walks. I think that's a, a, we, we even talked about it back in October. That's the on ramp to I think reaching our schools is really getting some strong prayer going on. We're blessed uh, with a lot of organizations, Moms in Prayer, and uh, all these different groups that we get to work with. And uh, the more we can champion that as a network, I think. Out of all of our, all five of our key areas, I might let me just mention those real quick. Every community is one of our key areas: widespread prayer, prayer, healthy networks, youth leader discipleship, and gospel sharing. Out of all of those, uh, if prayer is not there, the rest of it's not going to happen. Uh, so we need to speak to the Lord. We need to hear from the Lord, and uh, just continue to do everything we can to promote prayer for campuses. Uh, we've begun the pray for Texas schools. Uh, on Facebook, and I think we have like 450 people on there now. Immediately when the Allen, Texas event happened, we had a prayer team of 450 ready to go and intercede for the families. Uh, a lot of my cohorts that work with me in movement, movement DFW actually live there, not far from that mall, some of our ministry friends. And so it was definitely, I mean, it was so close to home. Uh, hmm. It just incredibly... Uh, Tough, but we had a team ready to go uh, uh, in prayer for all those people. And in fact, the church that hosted the uh, the uh, service for the people, the, mm. the memorial service, whatever they called it, was Cottonwood Creek there in that church. And that's where our chairman of the board, Jim Runyon, uh, of Movement DFW, goes to church. Chase, I was just talking to their youth pastor Friday uh, before all this happened. Uh, so just really hits close to home this time. But prayer. It's what we've got to do. Sin is the issue. I mean, they need the gospel. People need the gospel. That's the problem of the evil in America. Everybody tries to blame everything else. But forgetting God is what's happened. And we need to remember God. And the way to do that is acknowledge him in prayer. That's just, mm -hmm. sorry, slight preaching, but that's what's going on. And it's my privilege. Uh, by the way, Movement DFW, our number one thing that we're going to do is, is widespread prayer. Mm -hmm. uh, that is our first goal is to see a movement in prayer at DFW is so strong it'll rock the world. So the, I, I want to see that happen, and our team does too. Uh, I want to share, I want to give Olivia time here and introduce her. You, you know her, we love her, and she's been a uh, co-laborer and friend for years and so is her family. But uh, let me just share a little bit about yourself and talk about, uh, about what you do. Yeah. Again, it's good to see many familiar faces. Um, you've probably heard me share this a bit, but I'm excited to share this for anyone who hasn't. Um, my name is Olivia Williamson. I'm based out of Kansas City. 
and leading a prayer movement called Claim Your Campus. And we've been in ministry officially since 2009. Um, But actually, what's really cool about our history is we started back in 2003 with two prayer walks. I don't know if everyone here knew that, but there were two prayer walks happening. One was in Denver, Colorado, and one was in Kentwood, Michigan, near Grand Rapids. So if any of you are familiar with Matt Lockett, he was out there in um, in Denver. And then Jeff Eckert was out in Michigan prayer walking with some high schoolers around their high schools. Mm-hmm. And in Kentwood, the group that was prayer walking, they were so moved by the prayer walk. They said, we should do this more often. We should pray regularly together. Yeah. And so the their pastor, Jeff, you know, encouraged them, hey, you guys should meet weekly. Let's start praying for your school. And when they got together... They didn't really know what to pray for, what to talk about in the group. They pray for each other's tests and, you know, each other's families and their pets if they were sick, you know, like they were like, yeah, what do we pray for when we get together? But Jeff really challenged them. Hey, if you could see God change anything at your school, what would it be? And without a thought, they all said fighting. So every week they start showing up early before school and there were eight high schoolers that were praying for an end to fighting in their school. It was what they were known for in their city um, and surrounding cities. And so they started praying and praying and asking God and a couple months go by and the lead pastor of their church was in the school board meeting. And he heard some amazing reports where the educators and the administrators were all scratching their heads and going, we don't know why. We don't know how. We didn't do anything to make this happen. But fighting has stopped at East Kenwood High School. All all of the students, when they heard this story, it was like this light bulb moment. Like, wow, God answers prayers. And for Jeff, that was a really important observation for him and so incredible. He got to experience that because it made him ask the question, what if that were a reality in every school in America? What if every community could experience that, could experience the change that Jesus brings when we pray to him and we ask him for change? So that's that's how Claim Your Campus was actually birthed and started, was we saw this school transformed. And then, you know, fast forward to 2009, officially became a part of a nonprofit called Never the Same. And Claim Your Campus has been a branch of this ministry growing and reaching, training over 30,000 middle and high school students to pray for their schools since 2009. And um, as you can imagine, COVID was a weird year for everyone, right? Um, How can you reach schools when students aren't in the school buildings, right? Well, we did everything we could um, in that season. Students were meeting on Zoom. They were meeting on our app, online, on social media. And it was powerful. It was amazing. God was still moving and answering prayers. Um, But we are so thankful. We're now grown back into schools, um, seeing close. I think we're at 34 states now, um, back to 34 states that are praying, that have regular prayer groups. And what we invite students to do is simply this. Um, They download our Claim Your Campus app, which I would encourage everyone to go download and to check it out. It has daily prayer guides for students. So download the Claim Your Campus app. They can invite two friends and they can show up weekly to pray. Three steps, very simple. And we say, if you already have a club in your school, amazing. We praise God for that. Add prayer to your club if it's not already there, right? We want to see prayer, care, and share. And so we want to be that prayer piece for any ministry, any club that's out there. And we've had some incredible partnerships in doing that. Um, But if there isn't any club, we say start a prayer group. It's so simple. All you do is show up 20 minutes before school, 15 minutes before school, open up the app and pray. And we are really challenging students um, how to hear from God how to praise him and thank him in prayer and how to ask for change, how to intercede um, for their schools and for their lost friends. They're praying every day for their friends that don't know Jesus. And so we love that we get to train students, not just call them to pray, but train them and teach them about what prayer is in a really powerful way. We've been doing that is prayer walks. Um, Rick mentioned it 
a little bit. We've been uh, on this journey these past couple of years, and th- these are our roots, right? I just shared with you the history of CYC. We started with prayer walks, and God has called us back, um, back to those roots of prayer walking. It's such a grassroots, simple but powerful way to get people involved in a school. Um, Rick mentioned this to me, and I think it's so true. When you show up and actually stand on the grounds or on the sidewalk of a school, you you are more informed when you pray. And I know that maybe you don't know all the faces and all the stories, but when you are there, um, I know teachers who, who they have so much more authority than we do because they know what's going on in the classrooms and students know what's going on in the classrooms. And so it's powerful when we pray in our homes and our cars and when we wake up and have our devos and coffee, but stepping on the grounds of a school changes your heart. And I know all of you, I'm preaching to the choir right now, um, but that's what we've seen is parents and teachers and pastors and students. There's this like just wake up call when they step on a campus and they prayer walk. They're like, wow, I need to do this regularly. I need to, I need to support the school. I need to pray and care for every person. They're not just a number, every person in the school. God, God changes our hearts when we prayer walk. And so this year, what we're doing is going after an initiative the Lord asked us to do. Um, it's called the Prayer Walk Project. And we are inviting people in every capital city um, to prayer walk the middle and high schools in that capital city. We know that this is very trackable. Not every capital city has hundreds and hundreds of schools. Um, they're typically smaller cities in the state. Some are very large. Um, but we've created strategy, resources, and we're just recruiting friends and ministries, parents and students to prayer walk with us all over the nation so we can see more prayer for schools. That's what we're all about. And um, I just love it. I just love it. And I'm I'm talking a lot, but let me share one more thing before I go back to you, Rick. Um, this past weekend, May 5th and May 6th, Um, Claim Your Campus, like I said, I'm based in Kansas City. That's where we are. And we, um, this is so exciting to share with you all. We just accomplished a huge goal that we had partnering with two other ministries um, in our city. We prayer walked over a hundred schools in a day together. And um, we we had a list, we had our groups, we had our strategy. Um, We had 10 different groups signed up that we're ready to go. And that took their list. And they said, I'm going to cover these schools. I'm going to claim these schools in the name of Jesus. And we're going to pray. And we were able to prayer walk over a hundred schools. And it was so powerful. And we've just been feeling so much hope for our city. Um, also seeing unity between ministries to do that together and churches and all these people coming together. It was a really beautiful thing. So we are just fired up and excited to see more prayer walks after this weekend. That's exciting, and I, I was hoping you would share that. Since since we're here uh, networking, tell me, uh, talk about networking with local networks and, and how we can get people together like that. Uh, I mean, you had a great strategy, and you've got a, uh, someone that's mobilizing that. Uh, how can we see that happen more places? Yeah, yeah. I would say um, what's already happening here, just the partnerships between ministries. Um, I think I've heard... I've heard a lot of talk of partnership, but when I actually get to see it and be a part of it, it's so beautiful because there's unity. Um, people don't care about each other's names. They care about the name of Jesus. And so what we did with the prayer walks was really unique and interesting because it's something that anyone can do, right? Like it wasn't, it wasn't a worship night that we needed to put funds and time and recruit a band and a speaker, um, but it was a really powerful way for us to meet with God together. And so that was a cool way to invite different people um, just to meet face to face and to do something like that together was a great way to network, um, to work together towards a common goal, because out of prayer walks, you could have many goals. Um, we, we hand out flyers when we, when we have prayer walks and we tell people about CYC. And so what are ways you can get together, um, potentially prayer walk or meet up with other local ministries and churches. Um, and also just for us to have that banner of, Hey, this is, this is for Jesus and this is for our kids. You know, like we can't argue with that, you know, like this isn't about 
one ministry. This isn't about one mission except um, the Great Commission. And so we're gathering together um, to do this. So unity has been really amazing for these prayer walks. Um, And what we've also seen is being prayer support for local events and local initiatives that are happening. That's also been a great way for us to connect and to network with other people. Um, We've prayer walked for um, the Send, which was a big stadium gathering in Kansas City, Gen Z for Jesus, which was in Frisco, Texas um, last September. And so we've loved partnering and saying, hey, like I said, we, we want to see unity. We want to work together. We want to see more prayer. Can we support your event by prayer walking together or by praying together before this event or this initiative? And so we've just seen it's an amazing way to come together and partner with others. I was going to ask Olivia to share. Uh, you said you learned some stuff from that prayer walk thing, uh, the uh, strategy that you did. Uh, can you share about kind of how you made you pull that off? You talked about group leaders and things like that. Uh, can you share a little bit about that strategy? Yeah, specifically from Kansas City. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what we saw was um, it, it was cool to have that list and have a goal. Um, but how how we actually were able to cover all 100 schools is we had group leaders. So we split that list of 100 schools up into 10 groups. And we said, let's get 10 leaders in the city that want to help cover a group. And the amazing thing with the partnership that we had, um, we were able to invite pastors and local mothers and fathers of our city, people who are influential, who care um, for our schools and care for our city, who were connected to each location where we were prayer walking. And that meant so much more than us just coming in and bringing our own people and, you know, we don't know the schools. We don't know the areas as well as people do who live in, it, you know, live and breathe in each of those places. And so we were able to um, partner with other churches and ministries to help lead those prayer groups to help cover. And we would say, hey, these are 10 schools we'd love to ask the group to cover. And so they were um, going out and covering the list that they were given. But having those group leaders, having those local influential people. I mean, it just brought so much more authority to that group and trust in that group in each area that we prayer walked because those people were from that area. And you used a map. You, you actually used Google Maps, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so we, yeah. We, I mean, it sounds really simple, but here's, here's our trick. Y'all can steal it. Um, what we did was when we created prayer routes for each, uh, for each location, each district in Kansas City, we would just go on Apple Maps and we would type in all the schools and we would add stops on our route. And then we would just create a circle or we create, you know, a straight line of where, what's the best route to take, um, what schools are closest. And so it really, like each list probably took us, you know, five minutes to create because we have this amazing technology, you know, like we can so easily go look that up. And so that's how we created our route. It's really simple to do. Um, just as long as you have a, an up-to-date list of schools, then you just go to a map and you type them all in. And we've got that on our dashboard. So I, I thought you guys would get a kick out of that. That was so awesome. Uh, Olivia, talk about just a second about how Prayer relates to sharing gospel, prayer walking and such like that. We talked a little bit about that that yesterday. Yeah. The amazing thing is every time I prayer walk a school, I end up meeting someone or encountering someone who um, is picking up trash or walking their dog or they're connected to the school or they're in the city. And it's always amazing. Um, People will ask me, what are you guys doing? Because it looks a little weird sometimes when you stand in a circle in front of a school, you know. And so um, we we always are very respectful of the property and of the people that we're around when we pray for people around. And whenever I have conversations, it's so amazing to share that there are believers, there are followers of Jesus who love the Lord and love our schools. Um, we love our kids and we want to support them and we get to share what prayer is about, why we care about this stuff, um, how Jesus has changed our lives. It just opens doors. And I was just telling Rick earlier too, I believe it's really important 
Um, that's why I keep saying, you know, it's really powerful when we're home and we're on our Devo time and we pray for schools. That's so powerful. God hears us wherever we are. But if we are able to step out and to go walk on a campus, um, it's it's an amazing witness for people mm-hmm. to see believers actually taking those steps and covering a school in prayer level. Um, I just believe people need to see it. And I was so, um, so excited that people could see um, United Ministries and churches this past weekend in Kansas City, that they could see people from different backgrounds, um, different congregations that were coming together just to pray. And um, it was simple, but it was powerful for people to be able to witness that. And so that's why I think getting out there and prayer walking is such a great way um, to bring about opportunities to share the gospel with people. That's great. And then uh, I don't know if everybody's seen the website or or maybe they can know how to get involved with the ministry or maybe they've not seen the prayer walking outline that you have. Can you share a little bit about the website and what's available there? Yeah, I'll write this in the chat too in a little bit. This is cleanercampus.com slash prayer walk project. Okay, slash prayer walk project. So you can you can find anything there. Um, you can see the map and you can actually see on a map how many middle and high schools are in each capital city. And all together, this was this blew my mind when I figured out this number, but all together, this are capital cities. There's a million middle and high school students. And so imagine this year um, with combined efforts and mobilized people all over the nation, if we prayed over 1 million young people um, over their schools, that we pray for protection and peace and provision, that we would pray for student-led prayer groups. That's what we're asking God for. So everything that we're going after, the initiative is on that page. Um, We have a prayer walk, God. You're always welcome to use take all of our resources out there we have a promo pack for the prayer walk project as well if you wanted to promote and do this in your city Um, but i would say if you want to do this in your city an important part of the page is becoming a mobilizer and this word sounds a lot scarier than it is so i want to explain what a mobilizer is Um, we need one to two people minimum in each city that would say, I will help mobilize these prayer walks. And basically what that means is they receive a prayer walk guide and they receive a route. We give them the route that they can take to prayer walk all the schools. We give them the list. We give them the guide. And basically they need to pick a day and invite their friends to show up. That's really it. That's what a mobilizer is. And so We ask people to go to that website and to sign up to let us know that you want to do this. We'd love to meet you. We'd love to talk with you about what prayer walks could look like in your city. Um, And we we just really want to see every Capital City prayer walk this year. And what's really exciting is we are so honored and love partnering with an amazing moment and day in our year called See You at the Poll, uh, which we have some friends in this call. Um, and we are actually inviting people to prayer walk the week of see you at the poll this September. So the weekend before and after, what if we could bookend this amazing day of prayer by covering all of these schools and asking God to move when students pray, you know, like how powerful would that be if we had adults and pastors and churches praying over schools the weekend before and after um, just when students are about to gather at the flagpole to pray. So that's when we're inviting people to do so. You can see all of this on our website, all the information's there, and you can reach out to us as well. There's a link on that page if you have more questions. Well, I'm in, Olivia. I guarantee you that. But uh, I really appreciate I mean, we all love you and, and what you're doing. And and I was, in fact, during pandemic, I was your North Texas coordinator. I, I was an official claim your campus dude and uh, got to go around and say, hi, I'm the North Texas coordinator. I know there's a pandemic, but we're going to go pray. And so all over the place, in spite of the pandemic, what a better thing to do is go outside and pray. And we did. You know, it, it wasn't as big as it could have been, but it was something and it continued. And so that vision carried on. It was such a... Uh, it's such a powerful ministry and we're all we support you and want to want to connect with you and make that a part of, of what we do too so I'm, I'm gonna turn it back to josiah and let you guys ask questions actually i'm gonna jump in here and oh, mark go ahead josiah um 
I, I just got to say how cool it is because uh, Rick, you were a big part of starting to see you at the pole. Um, that's where it started. And then to have Olivia um, continuing to encourage widespread prayer um, generationally, how that baton's getting passed, that it's not just it's not just one generation, but it's how do we keep it going? So this is called network conversations. So we're going to learn from each other. So we're going to go into like some breakout rooms for about 10 minutes or so. And just, you know, what have you just heard from Olivia and Rick? And what what are some ideas that we have? And then we'll come back as a big group and go, so good, what I learned. Here's some other things we could add to this conversation. Um, Feel free to pause the video here and think through these questions yourself or with the group that you're viewing this with. When you're ready, unpause to hear more of the conversation and the takeaways from the youth workers that joined us live. You know, it's good to come back in this big group because um, I don't know about you, but there was some networking and connecting going on in our group with stories and things that are going on around the country that was um, beneficial for everybody. So what would you hear? What, what was um, spoken in your group? Share it with the big group. Hey, John, can you share with everyone that you were sharing right at the end there? Cause that was, that was really good. Uh, I was testing something for a small group. Now you made me large, but Fair my enough. concern my concern is that uh, Tim and I were raised in a church that really focused on prayer from teenage years, and too much of sorry, in my opinion, too much of what we're hearing about prayer at this point is developing another model for how do we have more time spent in prayer, how we have more people praying, how do we bring people together to pray, how do we demonstrate to our community that we care about schools and we're praying, how do we have a list of prayer requests that we want God to answer to make our schools better. All of that is good, but that sounds so similar to things we've seen the church do over the years about how to have a better worship service, how to have a better stewardship program. It still seems to me like we're at the program level, which is our human responsibility. I'm not knocking that a bit. But when we look at Second Chronicles 7.14, the idea is that God will heal our land, but we have to humble ourselves first before we pray. And I don't hear much about the humbling of us setting aside our agendas for God to do his work. And I certainly don't hear much about us turning from our wicked ways. So it seems to me like we're still at a level above where we need to get. And it could be the devotional time before a walk helps people focus on the fact that God is the creator. God is the king. He gave us life. We're accountable to him. And we're doing this in obedience and love for him not just because we're concerned about our schools. So that is a huge conversation, and I'm way out in left field. But Josiah, you asked me, and we had 28 seconds left. So that I, I, I know, I know. But uh, I think that's something at least that, uh, yes, we always have plans uh, that to pray for the schools and everything, and I love it. Uh, but what you said right at the end there is like it is also a hard issue too and a hard thing to have so uh, that's we, why I we are to commanded to work and pray for our cities yep. where god has sent us so we got to do yep. both yep. It's not either one. it's not just one yep correct well we still got rick and livy on here so you guys want to speak to that conversation maybe a little bit yeah i, I think as i think of this total thing is in mid i'm thinking history in mid-60s America invited God out of our schools. It's time to invite him back into our schools. Mm -hmm. And where he's invited back into our schools, uh, things are happening. I mean, we're hearing statistics change, disciplinary action go down. And I'm I'm 100% with John before we go out and do that. In fact, we typically, before see at the poll, we always did Second Chronicles 714. And we made that kind of our outline uh, because – you know, the personal revival doesn't really happen uh, in a big group unless it happens individually. 
Mm. It goes that draw a circle and it's going to happen within you first. So uh, it is a both and, but I, I do think it's time to invite, invite God back into our schools. We're seeing all these things and everybody's going, what's going on? Why is it so terrible? Well, we asked God to get, get to go away in mid sixties and he said, okay. And so I'm thinking, let's invite him back. So he'll say, okay. <laughs> and things will start to begin to change. I know that sounds simplistic, but historically I've watched it happen over the last 40, 50 years. Yeah, well, we started off our school day with acknowledging God, God as our creator <laughs> and God as the ultimate authority. That set right. the basis for every other kind of ethics and morality. Yeah. And we've My taken second that grade away. teacher, John, had a Bible on her on her desk, never alluded to it. Hmm. But still to this day, I never forget that. She was so kind. Uh, but I knew why it was that Bible on her desk. That's awesome. <clears throat> Olivia, how would, you, yeah. how would you respond to that? Yeah, I think what really stood out to me, John, was um, just talking about humility. Um, I think I've learned a lot about that. I've been challenged a lot in that because prayer ministry is often unseen and it's not flashy and you don't do it for the numbers and, you know, the outcomes you pray because because of who God is and because um, he asks us to, because we love him. And so I think um, how we exemplify that humility is, um, is really what I hope we can all do together is to really lay down our ministry names and really be under the banner of Jesus Christ. You know, when we pray, when we go and do these things, um, that's when I really believe we will see that humility and it's hard. Like I, I remember when I first started getting involved um, in National Network and Campus Alliance, and I was in a lot of these meetings. Um, I was like, "Man, how are we all going to do this if we all have a different plan and we all have, you know, our own agendas and all this stuff?" You know, and it's when I've seen leaders that are like, "I love what you're doing. Can we run together?" or mm-hmm. I don't care whose name is on it. Let's make this happen. So more students know Jesus. That's when I am just so amazed. And that's, that's what I want to be a part of as I've stepped into this role and seen, seen God move. And so I'm really, I'm really interested in that humility piece you brought up, John, and how we really exemplify that in prayer. Um, Cause we shouldn't be doing these. Ultimately I was, um, I was really challenged the other day. I was presenting claim your campus at an event and the Lord um, challenged me in my reading. I was reading Paul's story and how whenever he would get arrested or he was on trial, he would share the gospel and he would share who Jesus was. And that is the greatest message we have. The greatest message I have is not claim your campus. <clears throat> the greatest message that we have is not national network. It's not the cool things that we've seen in ministry. It's Jesus Christ. And so um, that's when I, when we really hold on to the most important thing the one thing, especially when we pray. Um, I think that will lead us to more humility and to see more unity together. I don't know if that answers it, but I'm really intrigued by that thought of, you know. Well, we definitely um, want to honor everybody's time. So um, I I always hate to cut off a good conversation, Um, Mm -hmm. but we can walk away from here um, being reminded that prayer is not just punctuation, but it is the foundation for anything. And uh, I think the networking piece causes humility because we don't come to represent our organizations. We come to lift up Jesus. Um, And so hopefully you can pull something away. But Kevin, I'm going to have you wrap it up and then we're just going to stay on here. Nobody, if you need to go, no guilt, no shame, go right down to the bottom right, hit that leave button and walk away. And thanks for being a part of it. But if you want to stick around, we'll stick around with you. So, Kevin. Excellent. Olivia, Rick, amazing. Thank you. Your time is valuable to us, and we are so amazed by what God's doing through each and both of you. And I know I need to put into practice what I've just heard today for uh, my city and the state I'm in in Utah. So thank you. Um, These conversations are set up just for us to go deeper And next time we're going to be having this conversation in about a month, we're going to have Randy Davis, who is our uh, CEO 
with a national network of youth ministries. He will be sharing on the idea of healthy networks. How and why do we have healthy networks? And the bringing them to the next level is sometimes it's just a, a, a kumbaya type thing. How do we build the strategy? How do we get the relationships, the resources, everything working together and the prayer so that God can use our networks in powerful ways? I'll send out a follow up to all of you so that you can get all that information in the contact for that. And then we always have free refills. It's our podcast. You can download that um, any place that does podcasts, um, and I'll have a link for that in our follow-up as well. And with that, um, I'm just, I'm encouraged and excited for what God is doing, and I think just need to pray, since that's what we talked about, praying for more widespread prayer in our schools and our communities. So please pray with me. Thank you, Jesus. This time was amazing. I need to hear these words. I need to put them into practice. Help me to have the humility to follow you in the ways you are leading and help each of us in our networks to do the same so that we share who you are in the way that you want us to go. So thank you, God, for Olivia, for Rick and what they have to share today and help us to put into practice so we have more widespread prayer in the networks that we're involved with so every teenager can come to know you. Amen. Thanks for viewing this network conversation brought to you by the National Network of Youth Ministries. We hope it helps you to set the table for unity and further conversations with other youth leaders. Any shared links are in the comment section on NNYM's YouTube channel. While you're there, feel free to like and subscribe. If you want to join our next conversation or training, you can find upcoming live events on our Eventbrite page. You can also connect to a local network leader at nnym.org. We're here because we are better together.